Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey here once again with another video on Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 and this is going to be my review for Episode 12, I think it is, otherwise entitled The Curse of the Earth Totem. So obviously last episode was essentially a filler episode, it was to flesh out Zari a bit more, the new character for this season. We really didn't get anything that really contributed to the season as a whole apart from, you know, her input for the team, if you want to call that, apart from maybe the end scene where we saw Rip Hunter approach Wally West, and that is furthered on in this episode, which we weren't really told, you know, Wally was going to be in. So it's a bit weird that he was in this episode, but anyway. But obviously, before going on with this video, even though I did spoil some stuff that's going to happen in this episode, if you have not seen the episode, be sure to go uh, watch it before going on with this video because there will be spoilers in this review. So yeah, go do that. But if you have uh, watched the episode and uh, continuing on with this video, be sure to drop a like and it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What were your problems? What did you love? Just let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. So the majority of this episode took place in 1717, I think it was, in the Bahamas and various regions around there. And uh, yeah, we're on the hunt for the Earth Totem, as the title does suggest. But the opening scene we sort of see is just Blackbeard with the totem. And it almost seemed as if he, like that girl he was with, or his love, or whatever she was, uh, like didn't accept the totem, almost as if they were playing off that whoever wears the totem has to be like worthy of wearing it. But, we'll, we're, but we will talk about more about that like towards the end of the video when it's more relevant. One thing going into this episode that we were sort of, uh, that was suggested, I guess, was that Sarah was going on a date with Ava Sharp. And uh, yeah, it was going well for the most part, but uh, yeah, it got awkward at certain stages as you would expect because they've been playing that relationship off as like very cutesy, very like awkward at certain stages, but they work well together. Um, but yeah, like Sarah was at that date for, I guess, most of this episode. Now, one part which may have confused people, but they have sort of established this um, throughout this season, I guess, and even last season as well, in regards to Ray's knowledge of not only like Myra McCabe or, you know, Vix or Amaya's granddaughter, who was another Vixen, but also his knowledge of the totems. Ray was present during Vixen's like animated series, like him, Laurel or Black Canary, uh, Cisco. Uh, Flash, Green Arrow, they were all present there, so they know different information that maybe some other characters don't. So that's why Rain knows all this information about the totems and their whereabouts and who own them and stuff like that. So if anyone was confused about that, that's why. Now, one thing I don't like on shows, I understand why they do it with certain things that might not be interesting, like we don't have to watch that, it doesn't really add to the story, like why we want to watch that, so do it off screen. I understand when they do certain things like that. But this episode did something where they went to Detroit in the 80s, they got all dressed up, but they didn't go out there, and it was just like, oh, okay, Damien Dark got the fire totem, and now he has it, but we didn't see him get it. But, yeah. I don't like it when shows do that. It just seems a bit lazy. Like, this could have been a cool episode to go to the 80s, cool hairstyle and stuff. It's probably a budgetary reason, even though this episode looked like it might have cost a lot to do anyway, because of the setting that they went for. Or it might have cost less, because it was on the dark, and it looked like it could have been on a set. But anyway, like... I just don't like it when shows do that, you know, do stuff off screen, just to expect you to like be okay with that. You know, I understand Legends is an, is an expensive show to make and sometimes they have to cut corners and stuff. But you know, I would like to see it, but that's just one probably negative I had for the episode that they skipped over like Damien Dark in the fire totem and just said, oh, okay, he's got it now, but no one died as a result of it. it just seemed a bit lazy to me, but yeah. One thing I wasn't expecting in this episode, and I was actually sort of surprised by, because I guess it makes sense when you think about it, like if Malice needs all these totems, he's going to have to get this totem somehow, and I guess another one as well, but when he, uh, Damien Duck got the spirit totem, I was actually sort of surprised, so Amaya is like a totem that makes her control the animals and stuff, or become like the animals, or harness an animal's powers and stuff. I was surprised that happened, I wasn't expecting it, maybe I was just wasn't thinking about it, and a lot of other people were expecting it to happen, but yeah, when it happened, I was like, oh, crap, well, Amaya, this is going to be interesting to see her without her totem, and how is she going to deal with it? So, this episode sort of taps into that, um, actually, I would say sort of, like, you know, does a decent job at tapping into it, but the episodes to come uh, will be interesting to see Amaya without her totem, and, you know, how she's used in those episodes. Now, as I said, Wally was the end of last episode and they didn't say he was going to be in this episode. I think they said that basically he's going to be showing up in episode 11, which was last episode, right at the end, and then it would be showing up again in episode 13. But they blindsided us because Wally was in a decent amount of this episode, which was episode 12. So we had him and uh, Rip getting drunk, uh, which was interesting to see. Uh, Cisco had given Wally a bit of a portable, 
a little uh, take home, a little gift, uh, what do you call it, like sample of the concoction that he used to get Barry drunk. So while he's taking that, even Rip takes a sip, which I'm surprised Rip didn't just die due to taking that sip, which, I, yeah, a bit surprising he didn't die. But you gotta say, poor Gary, poor, poor Gary. He always seems to get targeted by people. And uh, while he targets it, thanks to his phone, his little time travel thing, the time bureau thing. And Rip gets his uh, little, you know, the trench coat that he has that uh, Jonah Hex gave him. So thank God he's got that back. It almost feels like season one. Uh, but yeah, it was awesome to see Rip have that back. And I'm guessing he's gonna be wearing that for the rest of the season, as long as he's with the legends, I guess. But speaking of Wally and Rip, I think they had possibly one of the best scenes in the com in the entirety of the Arrowverse, and that is their karaoke scene in Tokyo. And I think it was 1992, early 90s, but I think it was 1992, singing Careless Whisper by George Michael, and uh, which apparently was uh, Jesse Quick's favorite song. So Jesse is brought up, I think without actually saying Jesse, and I think Wally might say Jesse a couple of times, but Jesse is brought up subtly uh, a couple of times in this episode. And we do know that she's gonna be showing up in episode 15 of this season of Legends. So expect that in a couple of episodes, which will be interesting to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, Careless Whisper, uh, Careless Whisper Karaoke by Rip and Wally. One of the better scenes that we've seen in the Arrowverse in its entire run. Uh, I had a good laugh when that showed up. Now one thing is uh, Blackbeard. Wow, he's, he's, quite, he's quite a coward, isn't he? he uh, doesn't, have, doesn't have much of a spine. And uh, there's uh, many instances in this episode where you're just like, wow, like what is this dude? How is this dude feared by so many people? I know Legends might be doing a bit of a comical version of it, but you know, there's some history to it. There's some truth to it. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know how the hell he captained a ship, especially in this universe. So um, very disappointing, Blackbeard. Grow a spine. Now, as I said earlier in the episode with that earth totem that uh, Blackbeard's girl or whatever she was uh, had on her and she like got almost like she was getting like absorbed by the earth totem, like she wasn't worthy of it. But it's almost as if she was like possessed by it when she shows up again at the end of the episode and she turns in almost into like a witch. Like if you've seen different versions of like, like, a, like a, what a witch looks like, a witch is in like a little pointy hat and I've got a cauldron with a long nose and black outfits and stuff. You know, a witch in like real life, like in history and what they, how they depict witches, that's sort of what they look like. Like she, she even had some like trees growing from her hair and stuff. Um, that's sort of like what a witch looks like, especially in like a uh, cult, uh, like old cults and stuff like that. So they did a pretty good job with that, but she's like possessed. She was not human. I know she died. So basically she died in the earth tournaments, basically taken over. So it wasn't sh her, I guess, that was in control. It was the earth totem or like a demonic version of the Earth Totem and what it was trying to do. Um, but I think they represented that pretty well and she looked pretty scary and uh, kicked some ass. Like she kicked Damien Dark's ass, so yeah, pretty good. Now we actually did see Ray use that nanite gun for the first time. I think I think this is the first time he, he's used it on the show and he uses it on Damien Dark's daughter, Nora, and uh, essentially she's dying a slow death because it's just breaking down her body and she was eventually going to die. But this leads Ray to be guilt, uh, feel guilty. And I think the only reason he was feeling guilty, as they do say on the show, is because he'd met her when he, uh, she was younger. Like, if this was Damien Dark, he'd done it to, or something, maybe even Kawasa. Well, he might feel some regret or guilt there for Kawasa saying it's, you know, Amaya's granddaughter. But if it was any other evil person, you know, like Vandal Savage or something, he wouldn't feel as bad. But the reason he feels bad, as I said, is because he'd met Nora when she was younger and there might even be some like lingering guilt that they couldn't save her from going on to becoming this uh, evil version of Nora. So there's some guilt there. Ray goes and gives the antidote in order to get the spirit totem back, so Amaya's totem. But Ray's just a bit too trusting and a bit silly at the same time. He's a bit naive and he gets himself into a situation where now Damien Dark has him as well as just getting back the spirit totem. So Ray doesn't think things through as if he's a bit too much, a bit too trusting. And um, yeah, now he's got himself in a bit of a pickle, hasn't he? But overall, this episode I thought was pretty good. It wasn't like the, my most favorite episode of Legends. As I said, I was sort of annoyed with that fire totem bit towards the beginning of the episode in Detroit. And they just skipped over and did it in the background. So it's almost as if they didn't want to do much with the fire totem in this episode and leave it till a later episode. I think the fire totem is going to be one of the last totems they deal with. Um, I know the death totem is that last unknown one. They have revealed that. Um, so we're going to be seeing the death totem in a couple of episodes. I think even the episode that Jesse Quick is in is the episode they dive deep into the death totem. I'm pretty sure at least. 
Um, so the fire totally must be one that we deal with later, so that's why they didn't want to deal with it now. But even then, still annoyed that they just skipped over it all. But that was really my only major negative with the episode, was the fire totem thing. Apart from that, I thought it was a pretty solid episode. Amaya had like a big uh, spotlight on her. So I like how Legends involves all the characters. All the characters for this episode were involved. Um, even like Wally, who isn't really part of Legends yet. Big part in this episode. But they always do a good job of focusing in on a character, like they did with Zari last week, uh, with Nate, like last season in a couple of episodes, Sarah, Mick, uh, and all of them. This episode did a really good job of focusing on Amaya, and I, yeah, I thought it was done pretty well while not exiling and like just forgetting about the other characters. They still incorporated everyone else that's a part of the Legends, but gave Amaya her own episode, and that should follow on, you would think, in the next couple of episodes due to the fact that she doesn't have that spirit totem, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what Damien Dark does with Ray, because he says that uh, he has a purpose, so... What has Ray got in him, uh, gotten himself into? Uh, probably nothing good. Probably nothing good, Ray. You've stuffed up. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'll be awesome if you could drop a like and show your support. Let me know in the comments section down below what was your favorite part of the episode. Did you agree with me with that fire thing? Did you not like it too much? Just let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.